What's going on team? Proof here. And today I join you at an undisclosed location. <laughs> a kid, uh, I'm at my wife's parents' house and as you may have uh, seen that I can't readily record or release videos on my usual schedule, but I did have this idea thanks to um, a suggestion I got when I talked about if I, if I wanted to do or if, if I wanted to show y'all a budgetary spike list and somebody talked about how talking about if they could get my thoughts on the present cards and how they might or what might be needed come break riot time and I, I thought that would be a fun exercise in that I can talk about the cards from both gotchas and kind of talk about what I suspect or what I suspect will be needed or a tech option uh, come break riot time and then once we know what the break riot era cards do then we can revisit this and kind of see where things might change and shift once you know the particular card skills and this way it can kind of help people i guess feel okay with their current collection because i've noticed in a lot of my comments people are talking about how they have x amount of this or x amount of that and is that okay or should they craft a certain thing here and there so i kind of want to talk about this uh in it in it bleh I kind of want to talk about it in this fashion using tier list maker took all the cards from both gotchas uh, put it together in tier list maker and my categories are must have a potential tech option something i might think you could use during break right era which might have some some niche use something that's in limbo which means that kind of dependent on where things stand with the present or once you know what the cards do, I have a better idea what where it might fit in terms of must have, potential, or benched. And benched are the cards that I think you won't have any use for during the break right era, at least right now. So I say we'll go ahead and hop into it. I'm gonna go from left to right and then top to bottom, however tier list maker chose to order the cards. <laughs> so let me know if you let me know if you enjoy this. Let me know what you think about. Let me know what your thoughts are on the cards um, down below after this. And yeah, we'll have a little conversation about it. So hope you enjoy. And if you hear any squeaking or anything up there, that's because uh, that's uh, my wife's my wife or her family walking around upstairs. So don't mind that. No earthquakes or nothing going on here. <laughs> but the first card we have is Spike Brothers Assault Squad. And going into Break Ride era, the most prominent deck obviously is going to be um, like a bad in Dully Emperor style deck. And I don't think Assault Squad, I think Assault Squad's Time to Shine has come and gone for me. So I think he's gonna be a bench card because I don't think, like ha having the ability to restand if something hits isn't as useful or won't be as useful, I think, going into Break Right era because bad in will already return things back to the deck for you. So. You can just and you get plus ten thousand power off of bad end, so everything that attacks will have the ability to hit your opponent's intercept if they need to, or your opponent's vanguard. So having the additional block or having the additional booster restandard, I don't think it's going to be as necessary. Jelly beans, jelly beans is a card that I think is going to be in limbo because his inclusion depends directly on how good Deli Mason is going to be for spikes. And if Deli Mason is, or if he comes as he is in the TCG, then I suspect it's gonna be pretty good to where it could be a potential um, tech option or it could be a must have card. So it kind of depends on how good Deli Mason is because once we have Deli Mason, then you won't, or come break right here, I don't think you're really gonna need Dudley Douglas that much. It could still be a tech option in a Dudley focused deck, but we'll get there. But I think the, primary car you're going to be looking for is Deli Mason off of Jelly Beans and if um, he's not good then you might not be using Jelly Beans as often. Bracky must have it's going to be a core piece of the deck and a core piece of being able to enable your easy multi-attacking because even though Deli Emperor on break ride is what you want to do every game you won't you won't be able to achieve that every game so you still want to have the good multi-attacking that you can get off of your Bracky being attacking going back to deck and you can search out something with Deli Emperor. Cheer Girl Carol, like she does, she would have a potential good use with Deli Mason. However, it requires you to hold her in hand and that may not be as necessary. And the 2K power buff that she gives 
isn't super good for spikes because spikes already have a pretty decent time hitting um, numbers. So it just adds another 6k body to your deck where you don't really need it or really want it. Cyclone Blitz, terrible card. Don't really need to talk about <laughs> talk about it that much. Uh, just Soul Blast for plus 3,000 power. It has the added benefit of not going back to deck, which is great and all, but uh, not really good when the context of Bracky, Reckless, Juggernaut, etc. Dudley Dan could be a potential tech option because you want to have the means to always have four or more attacks available to you. So in the games where you miss Deadly Emperor on time and you say you break ride bad end on top of bad end, then the, the uh, Deadly Dan becomes an easy way to facilitate four attacks for you or more because you can combo it off with Devil Summoner. And that's where it's nice to have the ability to search out something with Deadly Dan to be able to enable you to have that attack combo, especially late in the game when you're trying to finish your opponent off. And then Douglas, Douglas is a toughie because if you're using jelly beans, that means you might use that as a tech option to have more delis in your deck. So you, you always have the ability to have a deli to find in your deck. However, if you have Deadly Mason in your deck, then he becomes a bench card. So I, I, I consider him kind of a limbo card. He could be a potential tech option, yes, but he also could be benched if you just want to play all Deadly Mason, if Deadly Mason is a really good card to have, and you want to save your grade two space for other things, that way you don't fill it up with Deadly Douglas. So he's kind of a limbo card right now, and his inclusion will vary, in my opinion. Phantom becomes, to, in my mind, is gonna be a p potential tech option because it's a 6k booster, yes, but it has the ability to become a 10k booster. And if you're trying to push for game, if you line it up with an 11k attacker or um, jugs, if you have it in your deck, that by itself with break ride becomes 21k, or I'm sorry, becomes 31k, which might be relevant against um, your opponent's vanguard. And uh, just being able to have that flexibility of your booster throughout the course of the game is a probably, in my mind, a very needed thing to have. Next up, we have Deli Emperor. And of course, if he's the crux of your combo, then he's going to be a must-have card. So if you don't have four now, don't fret. You're going to be able to pull. Well, I suspect you're going to be able to pull from the previous banner to be able to get your the other Deli um, Emperor that you need. And on the plus side, since the second gotcha banner, the... Um, what was it called? Revenger from the Alps. Since I had a smaller collection of cards, it might be still pretty decent chance during the course of the break ride event, you'll be able to get your Dudley Emperor or get the materials you need to craft it to make your deck function as needed. So I wouldn't fret. Daisy, I think Daisy's gonna be benched. I, I ever, after having played Dudley Phantom, I never felt the need to go back to the Dudley Daisy because while Daisy also has flexibility to be a 7K booster with the potential to be a 12K booster, it also comes with the added hurdle of having her be called out from the deck during the battle phase, which is easier said than done, unlike Phantom, which can just exist on the board and become a 10K booster when you need it to, which means when you play it from hand, you can have the, the need to have a 10K booster available. And because of that added awkwardness that Daisy offers, I don't think she's gonna be a card you're gonna need going forward. So if you have your four, cause I'm sure you're like me and pulled a lot of Deadly Daisies, that's great. If you don't have four, I say don't worry about it. Field Driller, bench card. I was never a fan of uh, what Field, Field Driller offered. So uh, I don't think it's gonna be a good card you wanna have or necessary card you need to have going forward. Gary Gannon, he could be a potential tech option because in a world, if we don't get Death Flag Dragger, which which would then, of course, buff up Dudley Mason's viability if he comes as is, then we have a clean way to get Baden into our hand. But if you choose to have Ganon in your deck, it allows you to have additional ways to filter your deck out very easily to find Dudley Emperor or your Baden Draggers so you can have them on time. So it becomes a tech option there. Jaw Slinger, trash, don't worry about it. It's a it's a bad vanilla, so don't, don't even worry about it. And next up we got uh, Juggernaut Maximum. I think Juggernaut Maximum is gonna be a must have card. He does kind of have some, well, he definitely has viability if you miss your break ride on time. 
and he becomes a, a nice target to pull from your deck, say in a world you don't have a booster on one of your columns and you're on your break right turn, he can very easily achieve a 26k power with his skill plus break ride from from bad and dragger on the opposite on the other end of things he the number you have in your deck may or may not be four there's a chance you can go down to three depending on how you try to squeeze in say jelly beans for example so that's going to be the where the interesting deck building is going to come from is if you choose to play beans because mason is really good what's going to be the sacrifice cut and obviously the cut is going to come into your other grade three slot that isn't bad end or um deli emperor which makes it jugs by and large so that's where it comes kind of funky to kind of foresee where the deck building is going to go and i think that's going to be the most fun part of deck building during the break right era is trying to figure out those small little tech spots or a small little non core spot to kind of get the most out of your deck but that being said jugs is still going to be a must-have card um i I would say if you have at least three, you should be pretty okay going into the event. But coming out of the event, there's a chance you might need four, but at the very least, you should need three. Then of course, Maryland is a must have card. Now, I will say this, in a world where Bushiro could be watching this or Game Studio could be watching this, if you're not aware, they did release um, the archetypal archetypal i think that's how you say it the archetype pgs that have a new trigger condition would say if you if the damage you take would put you to six that's when it triggers the perfect guard which means that if you have an attack that would take you from three to five then the trigger then your pg won't activate but if it would take you to from four to six or from three to six then it would activate so that that become that comes in handy against critical base decks which try to um the term we use is choke or damage deny you from limit break by hitting a timely critical trigger so that way they don't take you from three to five and that way you have your limit break available now spike brothers don't have an archetype per se during this era of the game because dudley's never really were super fleshed out or they didn't get a dudley based um sentinel until during stride era which makes us in a weird spot because we got a reprint of maryland during the break right era so my hope is that they do release the alternate art Marilyn but they give her the alternate um, trigger condition that way you satisfy both having a new perfect guard for spikes if they choose to play the new perfect guard and it'll give you use for the alternate art of Marilyn that I showed in my um, my strolling down memory lane video talking about Legion and stuff so hopefully Game Studio, Bush Road, if you're listening, keep that in your minds because I personally would like to have a perfect guard that allows us to not worry about being stuck at three damage against critical base decks. So I think that'd be the best way to, to facilitate that. Next up, we got Medical Manager. Medical Manager is going to be a potential tech option for gathering a soul. It's a free ride. It's like if you have it in your deck, it's your best grade one ride in your deck. So you hope to see it on your grade one ride, but it is random soul charging and random soul charging does feel bad if you soul charge a trigger. It feels less bad if you soul charge a PG because it's like that PG never existed. Like it would go back to the bottom. But if you soul charge um, a trigger that you could have checked, especially if it's a heal trigger, that feels really bad. So most decks that play medical manager play two of them or so, one to two. So I can still see that still being the case going into break right era if you want to try to have the soul necessary for a full fledged combo sequence, which which requires multiple uses of Bracky and Jugs and Reckless. Olivia, Olivia is going to be a potential tech card. I've been fiddling with this budgetary deck after I made the poll, which includes an Olivia, and I can see her usefulness being able to attack pop one of your opponent's rear guards and then it goes back to deck which clears the space out for you and i can see that still being a pretty decent thing you will want to consider going into break right era especially during a time where um deli emperor i'm sorry where bad ends break right skill is going to return it back to the deck anyway so if it's going to return back anyway 
maybe you can at least get some benefit from it by dealing damage to your opponent and taking out one of their rear guards in the process. However, it is going to be kind of interesting to find space forward depending on how things shake up with your grade two lineup. So that's why I pull it, call it in the tech spot, but I have been impressed by it and it feels less bad now because Delhi Emperor is a plus one instead of a um, a net like a break even effect so that's where it kind of feels you can get away with some of these more hard minus skills or these more break even skills like Olivia offers Panther Panther's in that weird must have um, potential tech option spot because I personally love 10k vanillas in Vanguard Zero because they are very efficient at being able to attack your opponent's rear guards or your opponent's intercepts and get them out the way like Barring like the the um, ride chain 12k attackers, they are pretty much undefeated in terms of being able to very officially one to one get something out of the way, which then kind of requires your opponent to have something on board that can deal with it, which in terms of spikes might be pretty good to help them get more cards out of your opponent's hand for later so you have more knowledge of the situation. However, it is clear that if you have a lot of good 9ks with effects, then the 10k vanillas are going to start to dwindle down evidenced by um, Narukami, for example, which play one or two of their 10K vanillas because they have so many solid grade twos to fill up the space. So it is, it kind of goes from the must have to tech option, depending on how you view it. But I still would suspect that you're gonna need a couple Panther in your, your deck lineup once a break right here is over. Reckless goes into a must have spot because obviously he, you're gonna need them for your potential end game sequencing. But being able to be an early game booster that can transition into a rear guard buster or combo enabler is very good to have. So I definitely say you need the four of them to be able to operate. Some decks played three or four today even, which is a kind of a changeover from his season one status, but I welcome it. <laughs> but I definitely think it's gonna be a car you wanna have three or four of uh, once the limit break or once the break ride event is over. General say free. General Safe Free goes in like a potential tech option spot. I don't know if he's gonna make most final versions of your opponent of your decks, especially if we get the archetype or I guess lack of a better term, archetype PG, where it makes it easier to enable your limit break. The reason why General Safe Free sees some decent play now is because it's a great fallback option, but then we get bad end dragger oh, come to break ride set. So then where would um, General Safe Free Fall once we have another good grade three to add to the deck. However, it also comes with the added benefit of being able to operate early game in an era where MLB is still pretty popular. Even post nerf, I suspect it's gonna be pretty popular still. And unlike Deadly Emperor, General Safe Free can operate prior to you being at four damage, which makes it pretty useful to have, um, have the ability to call things for free while checking the trigger in the process. But if your deck kind of calls for the space or if you don't need jelly beans or something, then an emergency break ride safe free on top of bad end might be enough to win you the game, especially if you check a trigger in the process. So that's why it could be a potential tech option going into the future. Skydiver, I think Skydiver has some small potential as a tech. I almost put it in bench, honestly, but during the break ride sequence, if you have a Skydiver on the board and your opponent doesn't have any more interceptors or they have one interceptor, you can then attack with your Skydiver for 21K. It can go into the soul very easily. And then you can call another Skydiver if your opponent's not at five damage. And then that Skydiver can also attack your opponent's Vanguard. And even if your opponent hits a damage trigger, unless they are Cross Rider MLB, then that 21K Skydiver can also hit your opponent, which then takes them from four to five. And then you can kind of figure out what you want to do with the rest of your sequence after that, whether you call Delhi or it'll give you more knowledge of what you want to call from your deck to try to finish your opponent off. So if your opponent's at um, 26,000 power after that small scenario that I just brought up, you call it two juggernaut maximums, which then will be able to hit for 26,000 power unboosted or to get in tech for more if you need to say if you have a Delhi Phantom behind one of them they can hit over a potential six damage heal in this particular situation. So it, it has some small, some tech applications being able to combo out on your break ride. However, 
we're kind of getting into the spot to where grade three space gets kind of um get kind of snug so that's where you kind of figure out if you include skydiver what's going to be cut and then that's where it kind of dominoes down from there but it does have some usefulness as a tech option for that particular situation that i talked about and it's going to be interesting to see where it falls into place spike bouncer benched i was never a fan of bouncer since day one because i always found it kind of awkward with the um the intercept application in vanguard zero so you never really get benefit from his ability of hitting vanguard and getting stronger and that's not going to change for me going into the break right era double summoner double summoner has the potential to be a tech option because the ability to enable multi-attacking is one of the few spike cards skydiver included that can call over an occupied circle right now so in a world where um, you need it, it's there, and I featured that in my MLB video, but it also has some application with Deli Dan. If you have to break right a bat in on top of bat in, if that's like your best case scenario, if you have a Dan at the time, you can attack with both of your um, rear guards, attack with Vanguard, call Devil Summoner, and then after you shuffle, you might be able to call out a grade one or two that also gets plus 10,000 power for the duration of the battle, which can help enable five attacks on your break right turn, similar to what Deadly Emperor could do by itself. But you kind of build your own Deadly Emperor, so you kind of have some combo redundancy to be able to make sure you can finish your opponent off if you need to. So that's where Devil Summoner can still shine in this day and age. And it might, it actually might find space in your break right deck because of that particular interaction to have a fail safe option is always good ufo benched we don't even have mason right now which is the best way to enable the the drop and draw that it offers you but even if deli mason comes out untouched um back in the day ufo still never saw play because there was always gary gannon which could do it much easier for you and that's not going to change for me in vanguard zero so if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Night Attacker gets benched. It's the worst grade three spikes have to offer. So if you have it, it makes a it makes a good enough budget option for a Vanguard for a small bit of time. But we're getting to the point now to where you may not be able to win while on United Attacker without some assistance. So even if you already have the built-in contingencies with Dudley Dan, for example, it still becomes fairly hard to win because United Attacker is kind of vanilla while you're sitting on him wild hitter tech option tech op or wild hitter was a card that we never played with the played with in the tcg but it's a card we got now in zero and it's kind of a smaller or less consistent deadly dan but it does offer the benefit of being a 7k booster if you need one in an emergency but where it shines similar to dan is it allows you to combo out um on your break right turn to help you enable um, five attack combos or four or five attack combos if you really need to if you miss on Delhi Emperor. So it's becoming very apparent how useful these tech grade ones are to me, being able to help you build Delhi Emperor's skill, so to speak. And that's where Wild Hitter also comes in handy. And while it does kind of conflict with Dudley Dan because they both only operate if they boost your Vanguard, you can use Wild Hitter early and help you fill your soul and get them out the way, which helps feed soul for your Bracky and your, your Bracky trio. And then you can help finish off with Deli Dan later. Or if you're sitting on Dan early, you might tempt your opponent not to give you damage, which kind of helps the Spike Brothers player to help get their damage lead up until you need to use Deli Dan. Or you can just kind of use Deli Dan a couple times. And then once you have one open counter blast, shift over to Wild Hitter to try and see if you can check a grade three to use the skill anyway. But all in all, they both offer the ability to multi-attack if you miss on your primary combo, which is what you want to have in this combo redundancy. Wonder Boy, benched. I love the boy, the bread. He's, a, he's always been a fan favorite, but being a vanilla doesn't offer too much, especially now that we have so many 11Ks to operate with. So the 7Ks or the makeshift 10Ks in Dudley Phantom's world will be enough and you don't really need uh, the bread anymore. And Zachary, while near and dear to my heart, especially back in the day, it is going to be benched and I guess it's for the better. 
<laughs> I would suspect we might get Gloria, which is the one two combo that I employed a lot back in the day with the, um, between those two. Even if they bring back Gloria, Gloria might give it a new lease on life to be able to become more of a, a tech piece but it is a two card combo which needs to be lined up specifically in the same column with each other which may be too slow to operate um in the context of zero where you kind of want to have a lot of cards that work well work well independently of each other that can then combo into be something greater zach doesn't really operate well independently outside of gloria where gloria might still be pretty decent by itself and because of that i don't think it's going to be worthwhile venture to go down Granted, if they do bring it back, I'll still try it because that's what I do, and I've always had a soft spot for that combo. But <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's gonna be very worthwhile. But that'll do it for this um, uh, gotcha one, gotcha two breakdown in terms of what you would suspect to need going into the break ride era. I do plan to revisit this later. So kind of just to see once we know all the brick limit break cards and after we theory craft and stuff we can revisit this and kind of see if these still hold fruit come that time frame but i hope you enjoyed this uh this was fun to do uh, let me know your thoughts down below and i'll catch you next time peace be easy